there's now a greater sense of urgency among scientists to find cheaper, more energy efficient, quicker ways of getting us around. And some scientists are simply reaching for the stars. We've developed an engine that could propel an aeroplane from London to Sydney in four hours, but also a similar aeroplane could propel you into space and back again. Richard Varville is an engineer. He spent his entire career designing rocket and jet engines. Along with colleagues Alan Bond on the left and John Scott Scott on the right, they're referred to amiably as the three rocketeers. Developing reusable spacecraft has almost become an obsession. Most visibly, SpaceX, Elon Musk's project, and Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. Varville and his colleagues are taking a unique approach, a hybrid rocket and jet engine, the Sabre. The fundamental problem is that a state-of-the-art rocket engine, its performance in terms of its fuel consumption is too high. So the sort of central principle behind the engine that we're working on is to basically synthesize a rocket engine with an air-breathing engine like a jet engine. For this to be worthwhile, the air-breathing engine has to operate up to speeds maybe twice as high as a sort of conventional jet engine can reach. So the idea behind Sabre is to integrate an air-breathing engine with a rocket engine. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to have a means of capturing the air, which is this intake here, which has a system of uh, shock waves in it that slows the air down. The air gets hot in the process. It's now at 1,000 degrees centigrade when the vehicle's traveling at Mach 5. The air then flows radially through this large cylindrical drum structure and gets cooled down to about minus 150 on the inside, then flows into the rocket combustion chambers where it meets the hydrogen, is burnt and expanded out of the back of the engine. This is the key element. Absolutely, this is a critically new part to aerospace and this is the part that we can show you in a minute. This is the sort of jewel in the crown and its job is to cool the air from, as I said, about 1,000 to about minus 150 in a few tens of milliseconds. The air is literally sort of too hot to handle, so the rest of the engine would melt if uh, it tried to accept this, this air. So air will arrive like this, it will turn and flow radially in through this heat exchanger, which is composed of thousands of small diameter tubes containing very high pressure helium. And the air will take about 20 milliseconds to throw, flow through that matrix and will reject about 400 megawatts of heat to the helium. So this is the, uh, the heart of the pre-cooler. So the air appears on the inside here, now at minus 150, and gets pulled down this duct here into the main air compressor and out the back of the engine. So that's the, the key to the whole concept. They're constantly refining the materials used for the heat exchanger in a large blue vacuum furnace and testing the jet and rocket engine that will power this, their space plane, Skylon. The sort of holy grail of space flight has been to get a machine that can uh, fly into space and come back again uh, and do it cheaply and safely and reliably. And in fact, there's been no real progress in terms of um, the way in which we get into space since the very start of the space age. So the actual technology we're working on is designed to solve that problem. Although the Sabre is being designed to take us into orbit, it may usher in a new era of travel back on Earth, the hypersonic age. The Lapcat plane, as they call it, promises staggering speeds of more than 3,000 miles an hour, or put another way, flying from London to Sydney in four hours. What we have to do now is build an actual running engine, and that we're planning to do by the end of the decade. And that will then hopefully um, sort of... Uh, destroy the, uh, all the other naysayers that think that this can't be done. The project received a huge boost at the end of 2015, a hundred million dollars in investment from BAE Systems and the British government. Enough they hope to get their dream off the ground. When that day happens and that aeroplane rolls out on the tarmac, that will be a pretty emotional moment. I mean, my whole career will have been invested in you know, getting to that point.